I'm going to push play. Let's see what it does. I'm going to push play again. And I have to ask, what the heck is going on with these graphs? How is this graph? that's essentially flat, a straight line with a little blip in the middle, related to this graph that's in three different pieces and is all vertical. And how is that related to this graph that's in two pieces? There's something funny going on with rational functions. There's something very interesting going on with rational functions. And our job today is to figure out what is going on. So I'm going to pull my sliders all the way back to a equals 1 and b equals 1. And I have a flat line. And the reason for this is a is selecting a function. That function is the numerator. And b is selecting another function. That function is the denominator. And so by taking the slider and moving it over one piece, one step, I have changed the function in the numerator, and I am still dividing by the same denominator. Wow, that was weird. Here it's the same, and so I get a flat line, because anything divided by the same thing is 1. And all of a sudden now I have three pieces. And then, well, th there's definitely something weird here. You know, it'd probably help if we could see what those rational functions are. So down here at the bottom that's just slightly cut off on the video, there's a link. So clicking that link pulls up our rational functions. So I will tell you there are 40 rational functions here. And on these 40 rational functions, um, for instance, f sub 1, the first one is x squared minus 1. So in this case right here, this is x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. So as you're working on this, you're going to want this paper handy, which is also why it's linked to in the document. It's a very important um, piece of paper to have here. Because we need to see what's going on with our functions. And the goal is to figure out what are the three rules that are driving the difference between these different functions? So if we have x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, we have this function, or this graph. Two vertical asymptotes one horizontal asymptote. And the challenge is to figure out and play with and work through all of the different possibilities. And here's the hint. You're looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. And you're looking at the coefficient of the numerator and the coefficient of the denominator. So it's not going to be the minus 1 or the plus 1. It's going to be the x squared and the x. Or it's going to be the 3x squared and the 2x squared, or the x cubed. You're looking at using degrees and coefficients to determine what the rules are for slant asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and vertical asymptotes. When just by looking at the functions, can you look at the function numerator and denominator and tell me what the graph should look like and make a prediction? And you know you've got it right when you can start here, take x squared minus 5x minus 36, divide it by 2x squared 
minus 3x minus 20, so f29 divided by f10, f29 divided by f10, and predict that it'll be in three pieces with the horizontal asymptote at one and vertical asymptotes at negative two and positive three. That's the goal. So enjoy, play, experiment, make some predictions, confirm your predictions, or disconfirm your predictions, and see if you get it right. And tomorrow in class, we're going to be talking about this all class period long to make sure you really do have a deep understanding of it.